Hey guys, welcome back to the Here's C channel. Ta here is here. I hope you had a fantastic week. I think I'm almost 100% back to where I was. It still feels a little bit different. There's still slight discomfort. I mean, after all, I'm missing now four teeth in my mouth. Actually, and technically, five, because the oral surgeon who was removing my wisdom teeth last week also found small, undeveloped tooth of this size. Yet we're not here to talk about my dental issues. I mention this because in case I sound differently, because I think I do, you will know that I have four holes in my mouth after all people. That's crazy. In any case, in today's video, we're talking about how should we go about decluttering our closets, our shelves and our lives. Without further ado, let's do this. In 2019, and I would say in the last 12 months, the van life, ASMR, ASMR, yes, ASMR, and minimalist videos are that, like this trifecta of popular topics that everyone wants to talk about or at least mention in their videos. In my case, decluttering is part of the minimalism philosophy, yet I have a very different perspective on how we should leverage it. What I want to extract from the philosophy on the minimalism are the best practices, the best practices that are more realistic for us to implement rather than trying to follow this design guideline by which we only have a single chair in the entire room, an empty wall, none of this kind of stuff. Let's focus on one simple best practice decluttering the area around us, just getting rid of stuff that we don't need. That will help us save some shelf space, save some money, and make us a less stressed, less bothered personality in general. Decluttering is more of a general topic. I think it covers a lot of things. We need to be a little bit more specific. So let me talk about what do I mean when I say declutter. And from then on, let's make sure as we walk through the three benefits I've identified for myself as I went in approaching how to adapt that philosophy. Hopefully by the end of this video, I will virtually hear you opening those trash bags and simply getting ready to throw the stuff out. To declutter, in my definition, is to get rid of unnecessary things. These two trash bags that I have over here, and uh, and the third trash bag that I have laying right next to me, are the result of me finally growing through my personal closet and just throwing the clothes that I do not need. These were old clothes, damaged clothes, decolored clothes, clothes that I will not wear anymore, at least I think so, so might as well get rid of them. I did not want to keep looking at the piles and piles or hangers full of clothes that I wasn't even sure what they were. I finally allocated a couple of hours, I went in, I had my audiobook and I just went through the entire place. And yes, I now have as a result of it, three trash bags full of clothes. And as I went through this process, I used three simple questions to decide whether that clothing item will end up in a trash bag. Is it damaged? Do I remember the last time I wore it? And is there a chance I will actually wear it again? And there was no skipping, there was no pausing, there was no let me put it aside for now and decide on it later. I had to decide on every single item I touched in that entire closet and there are only two binary decisions. It's either staying in the closet or it's going into the trash bag. It was crazy to see some of the stuff that I had in the closet for years now. Do I really need a t-shirt from my kickball league in Rochester, New York? I do not think I wore those t-shirts. Yes, they're comfortable, but I did not wear them since I stopped playing in that kickball league, which is now eight years ago, and I still have them, and they're in pristine condition, which tells me I did not wear them at all, besides playing on the field. Do I really need some of those jeans that I didn't even realize I have? Or there were even a few items that I think either some bug got to it, but they were damaged, so I kept them. They were taking up space. Now, thankfully, they're gone. And as you think about buying new things, as you're shopping around, as you're seeing those deals and sales and promotions and Black Fridays, apply the same logic. Think about, is there a chance I will actively utilize, use that object for the year ahead of me? And if I only plan to buy it because it's cool, it looks nice, and I'm not even sure if I have a purpose for it, skip it and save yourself some money. And I know, I hear you. It takes a lot of effort. It took me three hours to clean one single closet. But check this out. I have three benefits. Great things come in three, at least I think that's what they say. They say we recollect things in three, so that is why everyone uses the list of three. In any case, I do have three benefits for you that will motivate you to go and take care of cleaning your closet. Benefit number one. 
benefit number one, save money. More money is good, right? And if you think about all the items that you're not using right now and you're about to throw out, as I think about a lot of the clothing items that I have in these bags that I'm about to throw out, the total sum of dollars that I spent on it, I could have done so much more and so many more interesting things with it. And that's the kind of logic I want you to use. As you shift your mindset to this thinking, as you teach yourself to think in a more thoughtful manner when it comes to the expenses, you will realize all those sales, all those promotions in the stores, they're just for nothing. You are about to spend dollars, real tangible funds on something that 80% chance you will not use ever again. Or if you'll use it, you'll use it in a couple of years. Why spend money right now? Why won't you instead keep the money? Think about the fact that if you compile a couple of savings from several different things, maybe a clothing item, maybe a piece of electronic and maybe some silly item of furniture that you did not buy if you compile those three the savings from it can give you an interesting experience maybe even enough to buy a ticket to fly somewhere exciting somewhere where you will learn something somewhere where you will meet new people experiences always tramp physical material things keep yourself honest the next time you're about to hit the checkout button at that online store online shopping amazons of the world they make it so easy to spend money so you have to double and triple Ask yourself whether you really need that item. And if you have any kind of concerns, put it aside, wait for a couple of weeks and see if that desire to buy that object still is there. Most likely all that effective advertising and urgency that the ads drive at us through the TV and through video and through images will die down and you will realize you A, have more space because you did not buy that item and you have more money to spend on real experiences that will augment your life rather than just drive it and bug it down with just more weight that you have carry with you as you move from one apartment to the other. You may laugh at my point about moving between the apartments, but not at any other moment in my life than at the moment when I have to move from the apartment to the house or from one apartment to the other, do I start having this existential crisis where I ask myself, why do I need so many material things? I moved into this country with two suitcases. Why do I now need two vans to move everything that I have? Unreal. <music> Benefit number two, no maintenance. Every time you buy something new for your shelf, yeah, I know there is a particular purpose for it, but imagine the shelf of similar kind. Every time you have more items on it, it's making it harder and harder to clean and you have to clean it at least from time to time. And more chashkis you have on those shelves, the less likely it is that you will clean that shelf or de-dust it at least every week. Eventually you will be at the point where you do a spring cleaning once a year when you actually go and clean it off. But other than that, you try to skip and never look at the level of dust that you have on the shelf. Same goes for the clothing closets where you have stockpiles of clothes and you have no clue like I did about some of the items that you have there. And same goes for pantries and some of the other spaces where we just like to cram items into and to never worry about or think about the fact that we just bought another unnecessary thing. When you don't do that, when you don't buy unnecessary things, you don't have the same problem. You have more open space, you have less things that you need to maintain, an easier way of maintaining the open spaces that you already have. When I think about images like this, see the common thread. The common theme here, there are no piles of magazines and old mail, there are no piles of bills that you no longer need that you already paid for, there are no unnecessary vases or chashkis that are just lying around. Majority of things have their purpose and that's how you should maintain your space. Maintain your space in a way that the items that you have in your kitchen, in your living room, in your bedroom are the ones that you need or utilize on a daily basis with a few things to decorate it. But that's it. Do not stockpile. Do not keep things that you no longer need because it will help you maintain a better, more visually appealing look of the household that you live in. Benefit number three, free mind space. You do not realize how much your surrounding affects your mood. When I imagine an environment that is cluttered, I feel like my brain, my thoughts are cluttered as well. The capacity to think is directly affected by all those ads that are bombarding us constantly about things that we should be having and buying, the items that we need to worry about maintaining, the things that just completely occupy us with their presence take away time from us thinking and worrying about things that truly matter. 
you have to focus on things that are important to you in your life. You have to make a decision, a conscious decision, where you select items that you need to spend your time on, things that truly make you happier. And everything else that comes up, you treat it the same way as you treat the clothes that you find in your closet. Ask yourself, do you really need it? I focus on three areas of my life, my family, my career, and my experiences and hobbies, YouTube channel like this being one of them. Everything else that comes up at any point in my life is being evaluated for whether it contributes positively to either of the three. And if it doesn't, it goes to the trash bag. As you follow the advice that I share here, as you declutter the space around you, as you buy less things and you focus more on things that matter, you will realize you became more relaxed, happier person with now a little bit of extra money in your bank account. Do you practice minimalism the way I described it? Are there other ways you can declutter your space? And did I miss any of the other benefits that we should be using to sell other viewers on this idea? Share your thoughts and comments in the section below. Well, this is it for this week. I gave you my two cents on the topic of minimalism on decluttering, but there are plenty of other good creators who produce content specifically on the topic of minimalism. One I'd like to highlight, Matt Davella. Davella. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'll link his channel in a couple of videos that I like down in the description. He's awesome dude. He produces a lot of great content and he speaks about the topic of minimalism in a very similar manner and I think even brings up a few of the similar points, but I think he builds up a little bit further beyond because that's one of the main topics of his channel. So if you got interested in the topic of decluttering and minimalism, go check him out. As for my channel, I'll continue decluttering my space, I'll continue going through it room by room, and maybe in a few weeks, maybe in a few months, we'll do another check-in and see how am I progressing towards that simpler, less material life. Thank you very much, guys, for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and check out the videos in the backlog, and if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for stopping by. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video, and I will see you all next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern, on this very channel, and don't forget to hit the like button as well. Something new. By the way, you'll notice that there are now new logos. I think there'll be a new banner already. There is a new banner, new photos, new visuals for the thumbnails, for the social media. The reason for that? August the 12th, which I think is the Monday after this video is published, it will be officially two years since I've uploaded my very first video on this channel. So I figured it's time to throw a fresh coat of paint on this channel and refresh things, add some new stuff for all the new folk who joined our community since that first video. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the new look. Let me know what you would like me to do for the rest of the year and as I continue to grow this channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.